Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video, and today we are doing a Q&A about some of the questions that you guys have given me on YouTube, as well as Instagram and Twitter. But before we get into that, something really exciting turned up the other day. Uh, I've been waiting it for a little while now, but it's time to pick up a knife and unbox my new camera. So, let's get it and do it. So I'm guessing a lot of you will know what is in this box already. Um, had a pre-order in a while back, but you know, I've been well excited uh, to get this and you know, just use it out in the field. Had the DA10 for a long time, such a brilliant camera, but the new D850 with oh, lots of packaging. Always good to protect your camera with all this packaging, but oh, makes quite a noise. And, oh. Here it is. Here it is. As I said before, you know, I did a video about the D850 when it first came out about how for some people it might not be the best camera, but for me, in terms of what it offers, that professional spec, um, amazing uh, quality, dynamic range, megapixels, but also having the performance to do that uh, seven frames a second, nine frames a second with a grip that I do have on order, but again, is on back order and will be here in the future. But you know, with some of the upgraded features, you know, the 4K uh, footage in full frame, just so amazing. So, you know, I just, I really wanted this in my kit bag, um, and for me as a pro, using it every day, you know, the D850 is the new flagship for the Nikon shooter. What do you get inside? Well, open it up, your manuals, classic, oh, probably won't read them ever again, so that's fine. Um, this thing is, it's some sort of lead holder, I'll never use that. Um, the strap, you know, handy, so put that down there. Battery charger cord, battery charger, battery, of course, need one of them. And a USB cable that I'll never use that either. So finally, the thing that you want is the camera. And uh, oh, probably never use the box again either. Out it comes, very nicely wrapped up and ooh, looks good. First impressions, it feels really nice in the hand. I mean, it's very similar feel to the uh, D500 that is still with MPS being um, sorted out. But, you know, in the hand, I felt one before, used it a couple of times at the Nikon school, and it is really nice. Just such a solid build quality like this. And I know people always go on about, you know, why, why are these cameras so expensive and stuff? And, you know, of course you can take just as good pictures on something like a Nikon D3000. This is 300 pound, this is, well, three and a half thousand pound. And why, why would you choose? Well, it's just the major improvements in terms of the ergonomics, the quality, the sensor. This is just an all round pro camera. And uh, I know that this is probably what I'll be using for the next two, three, maybe even five years, um, depending on how you know technology evolves. But just looking around it, I think it is just a refinement of everything that Nikon have been working on over the last couple of years. You know, everything from the D810 with that great sensor dynamic range has been put into the D850, but then they've also twinned it with those speed and performance qualities that you get out of something like the D500. Being able to have nine frames a second on a camera that is shifting 46 megapixels is, is just mind boggling from a couple of years ago, just how good that is. Um, but you know, all those refinements like the massive viewfinder, you know, the loss of the uh, pop-up flash. To me, I hate pop-up flashes. You, know, you don't need it. I always use a flash gun if I'm working with flash. So that better build quality, that just more durability is really welcome for the outdoor shooter. The Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, yeah, I probably won't ever use them, but really it's just all of those little refinements that make it great. The ISO button, everything like that are just gonna make this a great camera. I really can't wait to get it out in the field, do some testing and show you guys uh, the kind of work with it. But you know, I'll put this to the side because this is really exciting, but we need to get into some questions that you guys have been asking. Um, if you've got any questions about the D850, drop them below because when I am doing future videos about, you know, content with this, how I set it up, um, how to get the best out of this camera, if you want to know anything about it, just drop it in the comments. Uh, one thing I always say, did pick up is a couple of new XQDs. These are the Sony 400 megabytes a second. Could only get 32 gigs because they are just out of stock everywhere. But, uh, you know, I'll add a few more of these to the kit bag, but 
you know, just gotta have the best performance cards to work with this camera because there's no point crippling something this good uh, with lesser quality memory cards. But that's enough of my new camera, let's get into some questions. Right, so let's get started on the Q&A and firstly we go into Instagram and to photo learners. What are the best tips you can give for a beginner wildlife photographer? Well, I covered quite a few in my five tips for wildlife photography that I'll put up here somewhere, but three quick tips. Firstly, as much as this will seem ridiculous considering I've just unboxed a three and a half thousand pound camera, don't get hung up on equipment when you get started. You know, you can get a great camera like a D3000 for like 300 quid or something like that. 24 megapixels, excellent performance. It's gonna be perfect to get you started. You know, don't worry about gear, worry about learning how to use your camera. Secondly, go local. Don't worry about going on these big trips, massive adventures, anything like that. Stay local and learn to use your camera in your back garden, whatever. Really focus on just developing your skills as a photographer because doing it locally, you have the time to do it. You have great locations that you can just visit again and again and again. And that's gonna help you build up your skills to not only know the camera, but also know the kind of environment that you're working in. So that would be my second thing. And thirdly, I would say invest wisely. As much as new camera gear can seem like the kind of only investment in photography, but largely I'd say going out with a professional photographer, going to day workshops, and stuff like that gives you really great skills that are going to equip you um, to become a much better photographer. As much as equipment is handy um, for helping you to kind of get different pictures, actually understanding how to use your camera, um, learning from people who've been doing it for many years um, is equally as important. So in equal parts as you upgrade, invest in your skills as well as the equipment that you're gonna use um, to do your photography. Um, on a side note, I'm actually running a couple of um, workshops for Wex Photography. Hopefully in the future, there's gonna be a couple in London, so I will tell people when they're happening. But right, moving on. Right, next up is from Stephanie on Instagram. Now Stephanie is a wildlife photographer from uh, Cambridge. Go check her out. I'll put. Instagram link here. Um, basically, if you could give one piece of advice to another wildlife photographer, what would it be? Smiley face, like your number one tip. I like, I like the extra bit. Um, now we've covered some kind of beginner tips. For the advanced photographer, I would say, work on a project. I think there is no greater thing to do than actually just really get deep into a project, um, find something that you can work on uh, for maybe a couple of years and build a portfolio of images around it. Um, I've had a couple of other questions um, about, you know, how do you get into it professionally? How do you actually make it professionally? Well, projects are one of those things that are gonna help you to get jobs. Because largely, if you produce random scattergun approach pictures, you know, one of a, a blue tip, one of a great tip, then you've got a couple fox shots, and then you've got one of a muntjac. Like, just doesn't work as a portfolio. If you've got 50 pictures of red foxes, and you've got a range of different ones from the urban shots to those wild shots, the cubs coming out, and everything like that, and you've followed a whole um, project from start to finish, you've got something much better to pitch to clients, to put out and showcase as what you do. And, and I think that's a real um, key thing that anyone who wants to develop their photography should be going after. Think about projects, think about doing long-term work, and that will really help you up your game, improve your skills, and also be able to pitch it to clients down the line. So that would be my tip for you, Stephanie. Right, next up is from Joseph Moran. Uh, now, I met Joseph at the Nottingham University. He is on the MSc for bi Biological Photography and Imaging. Um, and his question is about camera trapping. How do you do it? How do you set up camera traps? Um, and how do you make the battery last for a long time? Now, camera traps are something that I've also had quite a few other people comment on and question about. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna do a full kind of series on camera trap. We'll call it Camera Trap 101. Uh, I'll go through everything from the gear I use all the way through actually how I actually put a camera trap out in the field to showcase how I do it. And if you guys are interested in that, drop a like on this video, make a you know comment and say, yes, Tom, we'd really like to see the camera trap video. Um, and I will do that in 2018. But just to give a quick kind of rundown as kind of how I use camera traps uh, and what I use. Uh, right, let's, let's answer this question. Firstly, uh, I use camera traps to make pictures that would be really difficult to do if I was holding the camera. Stuff that's gonna take a huge amount of time to wait, anything like that, or when I wanna be really close to the animal, um, of course, with me laying there might be a bit uh, difficult. So that's when I use a camera trap. And of course, largely, you wanna set up a camera trap to make an absolutely perfect picture. Um, you don't want it to be average, so setting up a camera trap takes really around five to eight hours to make sure it's absolutely perfect. Um, and that's how I kind of work with camera traps, but 
again, we'll, we'll do that more in a future video. What do I use? Well, I use basically um, my Nikon cameras. I use like uh, D3000s, D5000s, and my old D300. The reason I still use my D300 is it just will not die. Um, I've used it for three years camera trapping now. It has been submerged underwater three times. It's been in the airing cupboard three times, and it just lives on. Clean the sensor and back out into the field it goes. And I've sworn that I will just use it until that thing dies because it deserves a proper death out in the field. I use these with Nikon flashes and then I use the Kinesis uh, Scout trigger system uh, that I'll talk more about in a future video um, as my way of triggering it. Basically, the animal walks through the trigger, it wakes the camera up and then takes the picture. And that's how you get the long battery life out of the cameras because they go to sleep and then are woken by the trigger. But again, we'll cover more of that in a future set of videos if you guys are interested. Right, moving on. Kieran from Twitter. Your favorite animal to photograph and why? Literally impossible. Um, there's so much stuff that I love to photograph. Brown hairs, foxes, otters, gray seals. That's just stuff in the UK. Um, you know, penguins in the Falkland Isles, brown bears. I, I can't pick anything. Um, I just love photographing and, and just making lovely pictures of wildlife like working on a project and and documenting stories that's what i love to do um so really there isn't an individual animal that i would ever say is my favorite to photograph um but when you have those encounters where you're a couple of feet from from a wild creature i think that is what you live for as a photographer and that is the stuff that you know just gets me out of the bed in the morning um yeah i don't have a favorite uh animal to photograph. Sorry, Kieran, that didn't really answer your question at all. On a side note, Kieran also dropped me a line about um, reviewing portfolios and maybe reviewing some of your guys' pictures. Uh, so again, if that's something you'd be interested in, if you'd like me to have a look at your pictures, maybe do a couple of videos where I talk through other people's pictures and how I might go about improving them or changing them slightly. Uh, if that's something you guys would want to see and be interested in, you know, sending me the odd pictures a review, drop it in the comments and we will do that in the future. Maybe we could do one a month reviewing different people's pictures. So if that's something you guys I'd like to see again drop it below and we will get on that in 2018 but thanks Kieran great questions right moving down to David Cook uh, what size memory cards do you recommend personally I like to use smaller cards um, you know I've got some 32 gigs for the D850 I was trying to get 64s just because the um, sensor size is massive but largely I like to break down into smaller cards rather than big cards because you know just you could lose your data on a massive card you got a 256 gig and it corrupts You've lost so many pictures, so I always tend to go for smaller cards and more of them uh, than the bigger cards. Um, but 32 gig cards are pretty good, or, or maybe 64s. Um, but really, it depends on your sensor size and how many pictures you can get on a card. But 32 is pretty good for me. Right, next up from Philip Watson. I know it will differ from camera to camera, but what is the highest acceptable ISO you use? Really depends on the situation. Like, if I see a panda riding a camel, I will use ISO a million just to get a record shot. However, day to day I tend to find that I only really work up to like 6400 I don't find that I need to go off and over that regularly um, and really 3200 is, is a lot more where I tend to find uh, I'm taking pictures 10,000 is great on the modern cameras if you've got one of the really new ones you can easily push it um, but largely I find 6400 is, is where I tend to top out and you know that works really well for me right next up from John O'Neill um, what Nikon bodies are great value for wildlife uh, I know it'll have a huge range in value but right any advice welcome if you're a pro the d850 probably recommends the best value in terms of performance quality and everything in one package but you know it's three and a half thousand pounds so it's not really a budget option uh, if you're getting started the d3300 something like that is going to be a great investment you've got 11 autofocus points 24 megapixel sensor it is a great camera you know it absolutely outperforms my d40 that i started with but in terms of other cameras um if you want that kind of pro quality in terms of the ergonomics and build a d700 maybe even a second hand d3 you can pick up for the 600 pound 500 pound mark and they offer excellent quality if megapixels isn't a massive thing that you need to worry about but if you want really high-end performance top quality ergonomics and you want all of those pro features in one body a used d810 has to be the best value uh, at the moment kind of you know the 1400 pound mark to get that camera is absolutely just so good value and if i was investing in one camera as an advanced amateur and i had around a 1500 pound budget i wouldn't save the extra and go for d uh, d500 i'd definitely go for a used d810 at the moment so that would be my recommendations for kind of value cameras right so that's pretty much it for this video quick unboxing of the d850 that i'm 
pretty much going to grab, go outside and take some pictures with a rundown of a couple of questions that I've been asked over the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you guys have got any more questions, anything you'd like me to feature, drop it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And if you guys want to see those camera trap videos or the portfolio reviews again, drop it below. If there's enough people asking for it, we will do that in 2018. But I'm going to be back with more content pretty soon about the new camera, everything like that. You can join me in the field again soon. Um, but until then, keep shooting, get out and enjoy your wildlife photography. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.